This video will be on installing an air horn on a 2018 Kawasaki Vulcan VN1700. The air horn itself installation will be the same no matter what motorcycle you're doing. I just happen to be putting it on this one. I'll show you where I'm going to mount it on mine. I've got a video online of how the air horn works and how to wire it. Now I've grabbed a little small battery just for demonstration purposes so you can see what's going to happen here. On your relay block, terminal number 30 here, you're going to come out of your positive on your battery into number 30. You're going to come out of the bottom, or the opposite side, which is 87, and you're going to go into the positive side of your air horn. The negative side of the air horn will get grounded to the chassis or will get ran back to the battery, depending on our situation or whether you've got a good ground up front or whether you want to run it straight back to the battery. Now, the thing that some people get confused about is how the horn works. The horn basically works off of a positive and a negative connection. You've got a 12 volt in and a ground. So this works kind of like a doorbell. When you push the button on your um, horn, what happens is basically you close these two circuits and you send 12 volts into the horn which makes the noise. So essentially what's happened, this is grounded all the time. When you send the power down the horn, you get a beep beep sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to send power and ground into here. And what happens is when you push the button, you're creating that same circuit. You're grounding this out, but instead of sending power down to our little beep beep, we're going to send it down to our compressor, which is going to give us an air horn sound. Now back to your relay, 86 is the positive, so I'm going to put 86 on here, 85 is the ground. Now this can be either grounded to the chassis because um, it's coming off your switch or from your old horn or it can be grounded to the battery also. So as long as you get a ground there, it's not going to matter where you get the ground from. If you take a voltmeter and you own these two this is 12 volts across so basically if we send power onto this with this wire i've got 12 volts coming out of here right now as soon as i ground this what happens is inside the relay the relay will close send power down this circuit and engage the air horn so we've got power on here as soon as we turn that off we've got an air horn so essentially what we've done is we've replaced our button with this. But you're going to get power from your key on. This is key on. This is constant to keep the, the, the relay powered up so it'll have enough power to run down to your horn. And this is your ground wire. Again, it can be grounded to the chassis, it can be grounded to the battery. As long as you get a good ground on here, that's what you need. And before I unhook this, I went ahead and decided to make it a little bit easier on myself. I went ahead and put... 85, 87, 86, and 30 on the block. That way when I get up underneath of the seat or where I'm going to mount this, I'll be able to see my wires a little bit easier. I don't have to guess where I'm going to go. So again, just to cover it, 30 is your positive coming from your battery. That's a positive, constant, hot. 86, key on from your horn switch. 85, ground from your horn switch. 87, positive going out to the air horn and again the negative on the air horn can be brought back to the battery or grounded to the chassis. As long as you get a good ground, not going to matter. The, the main thing you're doing is when you're closing this circuit is you're sending power down number 87. That's what's starting your horn, making your horn beep. Last thing I did figure out, the piece that goes up in here for the air you can run a fresh air line because it sucks in the air through here the little piece of plastic or hose that came with it with a little uh, gasket is actually a filter. If you want to run this up under the motorcycle where it would be dry all the time, um, you can do that. If you've got to put this somewhere where you're going to get water and moisture in it, you may want to hook the hose up to it and run it up under the seat so it sucks fresh air in. You're not sucking water into this. I'm most likely going to mount this up under my fairing. It is so loud it's not going to matter whether it's on the outside of the motorcycle, side of the motorcycle. No matter where you put this on the motorcycle, you're going to hear it. So if I do mount it up under my fairing, I'm going to be completely dry. My compressor should last for years. Uh, if you put this down low, again, you don't want water sucking up through your compressor hole. 
If you watch my other videos, I've got a video online on how to remove the fairing. I'm gonna mount my air horn under the fairing. I think this pocket right here on this side or this pocket on this side are really good candidates. Uh, I know from having this off before that I've got room in here. I know there's pockets back in here where the fogs and stuff sit are right about here. So I'm going to have to put the air horn in place, zip tie it, and then pop the fairing back on to make sure it clears. But I think I've got plenty of room in there. Another thing I wanted to do is find a key on underneath of the hood um, so I can have power up here. My horn is up underneath of here, so we'll be pulling our wires off of our horn. And it'll be easy enough for me to feed them back in through here to the relay module. But if I can power my relay up off of this right here, which I think I can, this is going to save me from having to pull wires all the way back to my battery to get power onto the horn. Look at the size of the wires. The clips on them are pretty good size. Uh, I'm going to turn my voltmeter on. I'm going to turn it to DC. I'm going to key on. When I key on, I've got 12 volts, so I know I've got a good key on. Uh, right here in the front of the motorcycle. So I'm going to just temporarily fit everything in place up here to make sure that key on will work and I actually get a good uh, blast out of the air horn. What I've done is I've got up under here and I've disconnected my horn. I'm going to feed these wires back up into my fairing. So I'm going to go from there back up under here. Since I know I've got a hot up there now, I've got to get my key on and my ground up to there. I'm not even going to unmount my old horn since there's no need to. What I want to do though is I want to make sure I've got the right um, positive and negative wires up here. So I'm going to take my voltmeter again and I'm going to measure which one's my positive and which one's my negative. Now in order for you to see what I've done here, I've kind of wedged my voltmeter up in here. Uh, basically what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the key on and I'm going to turn it on the run position like you're going to start the bike. I'm going to check the lead. I'm going to probe one side or the other. And when I ground this out, I'm, I'm going to ground it right here by the uh, radiator on my frame. I'm going to try to stay out of the camera angle. And when I do this, you can see I've got 12 volts on here. I know now that this side is my positive. This side is my negative. If you probe the other side, I pop that into there, ground to the chassis, you'll get zero. So again, I'm going to probe this, I'm going to ground it, and I know I've got 12 volts. So I'm going to tag this as my positive line, this is my negative line. So when I go up top to my relay, I'll be able to find them easier. Now up top, I've just zip tied this into place so it stays in there. I've got my ground here, I've got my hot here. I do not have a fuse in here yet, so this is not going to, if you touch it to something, you're not going to short something out. Don't put the fuse until you're ready to, to make things work. I've ran this through the hole here and measured enough wire to get down to where I'm going now. So I'm going to pop a couple ends onto here and I'm going to feed these down to my existing horn wiring. We're going to test fit it. We're going to hit the button, make sure it works. Then we're going to go back and make everything look better. Uh, the most important thing is to make sure it works uh, and everything's going to fit where you want it to before you go zip tying it in place or bolting it down and you can't move it later. Another potential I see right now is up underneath of this uh, radio. Um, so I might consider that also if it don't fit over here, but my, my main goal was to put it right there. Okay, I've got my relay wired in. I went ahead and popped my fuse in. I've got my positive and negative coming off up here by my radio. I've already checked them for the key on. I've got my positive and negative coming off of my horn wiring, which I've already checked positive and negative, so I know which one's which. My fuse is going in to number 30. I'm going out of number 30 basically with 87. 87 goes to the positive of the horn and you need a good chassis ground for your horn. Uh, I'm just going to use this ground because it works. Uh, it's already here. I don't have to worry about stripping anything. I don't have to worry about I put a spike blade or spade blade on the end of it and popped it in there. So when I turn my key on that's going to energize everything. You have to again turn it to run, not accessory, because accessory doesn't send power. And my horn button now is an air horn. So let's get everything back. Let's unhook it. Let's zip tie everything in place. Let's find a place to mount it and move on. Now I've spun that around, put it in place where I think it's going to fit. I zip tied it in place temporarily. 
Um, once I slide the fairing on there, I'll know for a fact whether it's going to stay or not. I have taken my fuse back out of line, um, so the fuse is not in there right now. So again, uh, if I do bump something or hit something, I'm not creating a shorter spark and making uh, sparks fly. So I'm going to tuck that away. I'm going to pop my fairing back on, make sure everything fits in place, and I'm going to go back and finish buttoning everything up. After making some adjustments, I've had to move it a little bit. My fog light was actually hitting the bottom of my wiring here. So I pulled it up top. I've just kind of held it in place with that big air conditioning zip tie right there to hold it. And I just want to make sure that it doesn't wiggle and vibrate because the last thing you want is it vibrating loose underneath there. So I'm going to finish tightening it down. Uh, I've test fit on there so I know it's going to work. I'm going to tighten everything up and then I'll get back with you. <laughs> I've zip tied my relay up in place, made sure the connectors are all tight, nothing's in the way. I put my fuse back in line. I've got everything buttoned up here. I've got everything tightened up. I've fed my wires down through there. I've pulled my horn wire up and through the inside of the chassis back in this way. Zip tied everything in place. I'm ready to put the front end back on and go uh, scare some golfers. Hopefully uh, you like the video, please subscribe, please click the like and uh, check out my other videos for more uh, fun stuff.